Hello, my royal lovelies. Welcome back to the channel and of course, welcome to my home. I feel like it is a double strand of pearl day today. Plus I have my Queen Victoria replica coronet on in its wide set form and the Prince Albert brooch and the sapphire engagement ring. Right, we are all jeweled up, we are all matching. Let's talk about what happened yesterday. So, if you watched my video yesterday, I filmed it just as Prince, well, I posted it just as Prince Harry was arriving into the UK. So we had this sort of extraordinarily transatlantic dash from Prince Harry, of which he leaked to the media via friends that he was going to come. Um, I've heard people online saying, you know, this was a private visit and we should all keep our noses out um, of a private visit. This was not a private visit. If this had been a private visit, we wouldn't have known about it. Harry made it perfectly clear that we knew uh, that he was coming because he had his friends leak it to the media. So, you know, <laughs> although he might not be speaking to certain tabloids, although there are certain publications of which he often goes, um, he most definitely has given the green light for his friends to divulge that level of information. So the media was fully aware that uh, Prince Harry was coming because he wanted us to know that he was coming. Um, I've had a little bit of time to reflect on the reasons and the motives. One of the things that I said would be very, very telling is how long Harry spent with his father and how long he stayed in the United Kingdom. So we'll get to those details in a moment. Um, but we had this extraordinary transatlantic dash. I think that uh, there is no reason to disbelieve that the king personally phoned his siblings and both of his sons to tell them in person about his diagnosis. But I think now, knowing what we know about how long the visit was, I certainly don't think it was a call to be by King Charles's bedside. As you'll see in a moment, we had this extraordinary, I keep using extraordinary as a word because it is extraordinary, slap down of Harry by the king. Okay, let's get into all of the details. So, in yesterday's video, um, I think Prince Harry had landed and we didn't know whether or not he was going to go straight to whatever accommodation he was going to go to after this long flight or whether he would go and see the king directly. Turned out, straight from the airport, he went to Clarence House where the king has been recuperating. Now, the king at this point had had his first bout of whatever therapy he, he is having for his condition. We don't know if that is in the form of radiotherapy or chemotherapy, but he had had treatment. So he was at home at Clarence House. We also knew uh, that potentially there could be royal movement to Sandringham. Um, now Sandringham isn't, you know, a bazillion miles away, but it is, you know, a good two, two and a half, maybe three uh, hours away by car, but not by helicopter. And you'll see uh, that detail in a moment. So Harry was seen arriving at Clarence House. Um, he looked a little bit bleary eyed. Of course, he'd just had an 11 hour transatlantic flight, although I doubt very, very, very much that he'd have been flying cattle class in economy he'd gone at least business, I would imagine. So one would hope that he had a few hours of shut eye. Um, I certainly don't think, uh, you know, he'd be up. <sighs> anyway, let's get back to it. So he arrives at Clarence House um, and then he stays for just 45 minutes. And of course, the king leaves with the queen. So we see for the first time images of the king leaving with the queen since having his uh, cancer diagnosis and then the first round of treatment. So um, on the face of it, he looked well. 
Um, you know, he certainly didn't look like someone who is on his deathbed, which kind of made it look to me. Uh, and of course, I questioned and I explored all, as was right to do, as was right to do, explore all the options of Harry's motives in having this transatlantic dash. And I think I now know um, what the answer was. I don't think that when the king phoned that there was this massive call to action. There wasn't this massive, you must return, you know, we need you, we need you to be councillor of state, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at death's door. There was none of that. Um, the king was just about to start treatment, optimistic of a positive outcome. There was no immediate rush or need for Harry to return to the UK instantly. This was the Sussex PR machine in overdrive. Snake Mountain was alert, ready and active should such an eventuality occur, I'm sure. The Montecito monster, I think, literally shoved Harry out of Snake Mountain. You go and see your father. We need to be seen. We need our royal connections renewed. Um, you know, you're not going to have another chance with William, if he becomes king, we need to be seen to be believed. We need to renew our royal magic. You get there and you do it. And that's exactly what the ginger lapdog puppy did. Hopped on a plane straight over to the UK under the guise of, you know, being this sort of doting son. I mean, where has the doting son been over the past three, four years is what I want to know. Anyway, it's convenient. It's very convenient for Harry to suddenly have this big change of heart. But the thing is that it is not working. We all saw through it. So the king literally saw him for 45 minutes. I would imagine he would have remained tight-lipped. Of course, we do not know what at this stage went on in those private conversations. And here is the hinge point. We should not know what went on in those private conversations as much as we'd love to know. I mean, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall, just like any of you would. I'm sure, you know, little peeping, pe peeping around the curtains. I would have loved to have been in the shadows witnessing that meeting. However, we should not know about that conversation. And the only way we are going to know about that conversation is if somebody leaks that information. Now, I would imagine that the Queen and the King saw Harry together, um, and therefore any leaks could only come from one of three people. Um, I doubt that there was any staff in the room at that particular moment. There may have been, but I kind of, I doubt it. I think it would have been a very restricted moment. So the King, the Queen and Harry the king and queen, I doubt, are going to leak anything of such a nature. Uh, the palace has been very tight on uh, what has been said and been shown to the media and the public. Although we have had more information, unprecedented information on royal health than in previous uh, occasions. So any leaks would come from Harry. The royal family would know if any leaks have come from Harry. So this is a hinge point moment. Is Harry going to prove his loyalty to the crown, to his father? Um, or is bits of information going to be leaked left, right and centre to People magazine and other favoured Sussex media outlets? Time will tell, but that is very, very important. Now, after the 45 minute uh, uh, visit, uh, by the way, King Charles would have planned, um, I mean, they didn't have long to plan, but he would have planned that once he'd had his treatment, he would have returned to Clarence House and then would have made that move to Sandringham. Now, some people are saying, I digress slightly, some people are saying, you know, why not just go to Windsor? It's a bit closer. I think Sandringham feels to, to the king a bit more homely, maybe a bit more of a place that is for recuperation, there's less, uh, there's no p overhead plane noise, don't forget Windsor Castle uh, is underneath a flight path, 
there's less visitors, all that kind of thing. So I think it may feel more like a recuperation destination. And, of course, because of the use of the Royal Helicopter, uh, it's, it's only about an hour's uh, flight. So, we saw the King basically kick Harry out. He was not going to change his plans just because his uh, the arrival of an unsolicited visit, which is what I think this was. I think we're looking at a unsolicited visit. I don't think the King said, oh, Harry, come back, come back as quick as possible. Uh, Harry dashed. He, he brought this visit on himself. He imposed himself on the King and the King's plans. And his father, quite rightly, said, I am not changing my plans. You have 45 minutes, the time from when you land until the time that I planned to, to, to fly. Therefore, Harry was squeezed in at the last minute. Uh, the king was not changing his plans. We saw the king and queen leave. Uh, so they went from Clarence House, the short distance from Clarence House to Buckingham Palace, where the helicopter would then take them off to Sandringham. And of course, we haven't seen them since then. So Harry was left after his dash, his 11 hour dash, with just a 45 minute visit that I imagine was very, very restrictive uh, in what the king, in what details the king told him. No recollection, um, reconciliation, I should say, not recollection, reconciliation with Prince William. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's go on to where Harry's been staying. So lots of speculation. I covered it yesterday. Would he stay at the empty Frogmore Cottage? Windsor was an option. Clarence House was an option. Um, he did not travel to Sandringham with the King. That we do know. So there had not been an invitation extended. Oh, you know, Harry, come and join me at Sandringham. No, that was off limits. The King had had enough at 45 minutes. I mean, he's got to recuperate Never mind having that traitor in his midst. Anyway, um, so Harry, it has been reported that Harry has been staying at a luxury hotel in London. How long he will be staying there for remains to be seen. That 45 minute visit could have been done by video call. Um, you know, this was not a case of the king is in imminent danger. I think that was quite apparent from uh, from the, the visuals we had of the king. We saw how he looked. I've probably put photos up already. He looked well. Now, I know, I know that when it comes to cancer treatments, uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, you have to get worse before you get better. And immediately after treatment, you are not going to be feeling the full after effects, especially when you've had several rounds as well. So the king, you know, is looking at the moment in decent health. Um, but I don't, I think the urgency of this 11 hour dash, it was not needed. It was unsolicited and it was uncalled for. And it was most definitely the PR machine of the Montecito monster and the ginger lap dog going into overdrive. Um, they are definitely preparing for if anything were to go wrong and how they can capitalise and be seen as in the midst of royal happenings as possible. So he's staying in a London hotel. How long will he stay for? I mean, if he's not going to Sandringham, then, you know, he hasn't got any other engagements to do. This was a spare of the moment visit. Um, he's not staying with any other family at present. So he hasn't really got a purpose for being here. Let's move on to the Prince of Wales, Prince William and Catherine. There has been no move for a reconciliation between the brothers. I've heard little whispers that William could be potentially open to seeing him, um, although that has not happened as of yet. Um, and I think it very, 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 very highly unlikely. And there would be, I think, a lot of <sighs> secrecy around the Princess of Wales condition. I doubt Harry knows the full details about it. 
Um, so I imagine there would be, a, again, a lot of restrictive information with regards to that. I don't think that William and Catherine would want Harry to know too much in case the likes of People magazine or favoured Sussex cheerleaders uh, got certain leaked information. So I think they are being incredibly uh, cagey. Uh, as I've been saying, 11, 000, 11 hours uh, Harry travelled. It's 5,000 miles from California to the UK. Um, I think that we need to see now how things are going to go. Um, it's still incredibly early days. I think, and I've heard, you know, certain journalists talk about this as well. I think that over the coming days and weeks, the palace is going to have to reveal more details. I would expect the first kind of thing to come out, maybe that there would be a, a thank you from the king and the queen for all the well wishes, uh, and perhaps a little update on, uh, on the king's uh, condition uh, in terms of remaining hopeful, that kind of thing. Um, but being open about a medical condition was meant to stop speculation. Um, and all it has done is made speculation rife online, on social media, in person, people talking to each other, you know, wondering what form of cancer the king has. Um, and of course, you know, we're all talking about it. So I think that coming up, it is likely at some point that we will find out what form of cancer it is. The likely contenders, I think at the moment, the forerunner is perhaps um, some kind of bladder, uh, something sort of in that region of the body that could have been picked up. Uh, but I don't want to allude to anything too much uh, until we know full details. I think in time, we will know the full details, but it's just a waiting game at this moment. So the next big news I think coming out might be a little update. And then of course, we will know whether or not Prince Harry has left the UK to return to Snake Mountain. Okay, whilst we're on the subject of Snake Mountain and Harry and Meghan, there was something that showed up. I think it was on the dreaded X. Uh, that caught my attention and made me smile. And it's a detail that I myself had uh, managed to to overlook or just not notice, or maybe I, th I put it down to a stylistic choice. Uh, but there is a, a photo going around of the choice of carpets for royal weddings. Now, I did know this, and it's, um, it's kind of, it's boggled my mind that it, that it has escaped me. Um, but the senior royals, those in the direct line of succession, uh, and I mean the real senior senior, i.e. if it's the monarch or it's the Prince of Wales, that kind of thing, they get a, to use the red carpet when it comes to walking down the aisle. If it's a minor royal, so for example, Princess Eugenie, uh, Sarah and Andrew, they got a blue carpet, which signifies being sort of high up, you know, in royalty, but you are still classed as being minor royals. So, for example, Diana and Charles got a red carpet. Uh, Prince William and Catherine got a red carpet. As I've said before, Beatrice, um, Eugenie and Jack got a blue carpet. Sarah and Andrew got a blue carpet and so on and so on. Meghan and Harry had no carpet. Oh my goodness, how did I not? I mean, maybe at the time, I just thought it was a stylistic choice because her dress was very simple. Oh, and by the way, her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, apparently um, told uh, a friend that she thought that Meghan's dress was too white, too virginal, uh, owing to her current, her previous uh, marital situations. So, um, I don't think the Queen was cr criticising necessarily white dresses. Princess Anne, for example, married in a off-white, off-white, that's the key, uh, 
uh, wedding outfit. But Meghan's was very, very pure virginal, virgin white. And of course, perhaps the Queen did think that, that was a little bit um, off kilter, uh, <laughs> owing to her, her premarital history, shall we say. Anyway, let's not say any more about that. I think Her Late Majesty was probably correct. I mean, she normally was uh, with matters of symbolism when it comes to fashion and jewellery. Anyway, let's park that one for a moment. Uh, we'll have a little giggle in private about that one. Um, but the no carpet, I thought maybe it was because at the time, simplistic dress, you know, sort of strip things back. And of course, she thought that the, um, that it, that the church stank, well, that the chapel stank. So she wanted all, um, all nice smelling um, candles or whatever it was. Uh, and she didn't get away there. So I think she had a little strop uh, when she was told that she couldn't have the red carpet that William and Catherine had had and that she'd have to have the blue carpet. Oh, well, Megsy Bay, Megsy Baby. Ooh, shake those pearls. She did not want to have the blue carpet. Oh, no, she didn't want to be in the same realm as Andrew and Sarah or... Um, or Eugenie and Jack. Oh, no, no, no. She wanted the same as William and Catherine. She wanted red. She wanted to walk that red carpet. I'm Migsy Baby and I'm walking down the red carpet. Woohoo! I'm coming. Look at me. I haven't got a daddy with me, but I'm being walked down the aisle with Prince Charles. Woohoo! Future king. Look at me. Star attraction on the red carpet. Uh, and who can forget that incident when Meghan wasn't allowed on the red carpet, but <laughs> when they were on a foreign visit uh, and Harry was. Ooh. Anyway, um, so she wanted red carpet. She was offered blue carpet and she refused and therefore she had no carpet. And actually, no carpet is what they have at funerals. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, my love. I mean... <laughs> It may as well have been a funeral. It was pretty much the death of Prince Harry as we know, as we knew him back then. Anyway, I just thought that was, um, that was worth a mention, my loves, just in case you'd overlooked it too. Okay, so that's the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. If you've watched this far, please leave a comment. Don't forget to share on social media. It's very, very important. Share the link on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. Share it in, on Facebook, on, on the groups, on all the royal groups. Post, 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 my loves. Share, share the news. So, from me, until next time, mwah to you all, and goodbye.